from cutting an onion correctly to learning the proper way to clean your sink, having a handy collection of cooking skills is essential for making better meals and saving time. We're diving into a few of them today in a new segment that we're calling Kitchen Know How. Lifestyle expert Mandy Landefeld is here to break it all down for us. Welcome. Thank you. Well, you know, you got to know what to do. I know. I we know. We got to, you know, and I, I, I know what to do, so I'm going to share it. Listen, uh, we could do a 90 minutes on this alone, Kitchen Hacks, but you've got three really good ones. Let's yes. dive right into the first one. Okay, so, you know, when you have a recipe that calls for peeled tomatoes or, like, maybe you're making a tomato pie now that it's the end of summer and you're yeah. trying to get the best out of your garden, or beautiful peaches in a beautiful peach and bourbon pie, which yeah, would be right up my alley. Yes. Um, so how do you peel the peaches without giving up all that beautiful fruit, and especially when it's really ripe? Right. Then, Don't. you know, so this is what you need to do. And it's real simple, and it really takes a minute. So go ahead and heat up a pot of boiling water. And for the sake of Christine, because we don't want to peel Christine's fingers, <laughs> no, this is not, on, but you'll boil the water and bring it all the way to, the, to boiling. And then while you're waiting for that to boil, I'm going to show you, if you go and you take your knife, a paring knife, and make an X right at the bottom of your peach or your tomato. Got it. And especially if you have peaches that are not quite ripe, then that this is perfect because it will all you have to do is leave it in the water for a little bit longer right, right. so i'm going to have you do the same to our tomato got it right at the bottom so that's right a very sharp knife oh, excuse be me. careful okay. don't go too deep oh that's don't it. go too deep yeah all we're doing is we're giving the skin a way to access right perfect is that okay i'm going to take the sharp implement away from christine okay, all right everyone. so Pretend that this water is boiling and we would gently lower those in there. Tomatoes I only leave for like 30 seconds. Oh wow, okay. Like really, really quick. Good to know. And then peaches, depending on how ripe, if it's a really ripe peach, again, probably 30 to 45 seconds. If it's a very not ripe peach, <laughs> because you're gonna be baking it anyways and you're, you don't need like the most delectable, like soft peaches, because right. you'll end up with mush. You just leave those yeah. in for probably a minute and a half. So take out our tomato. What we did was, once they were in the hot water, you have to put it into a, um, an cool. ice bath. And that stops the cooking process. But look at how easy. You guys, come I mean, on now. it's peeling like a little flower. Look at it's that. perfect. Perfect. So that, and then you would be able to just go ahead and discard those skins yeah. and get on with your recipe. Okay, so got just it. Put that right back all in right. there. All right. So next, we all. I'm going to move the sharp knife away. Yes. Okay, so next, we all want to know how to make a cake that's beautiful. Bakery, you know, gorgeous and all that. And just make a homemade cake for our family, right? Right. So the two tools that are super key in this is called an offset spatula. And that's what you have here. This is a smaller one that I would use for like a cupcake or if you really want to get into the smaller sides of it. But you have dainty little hands, okay, so you feel right. free to use the small one. Okay, so. And so you put a third of your frosting in the center, and you don't even need to go to the edges. You're just, this oh. is the, like the basic middle layer, right? Oh, okay. So you're going to go pretty much to the edge, but when we put the weight down of right, the cake, it's, it's going to push it yeah. out, right? And what I have done, too, is I have lined our my really pretty little cake stand right. with parchment paper. And the reason I've done that, and I've torn it into little sheets, and I've tucked it under the edges, is because we can be as messy as we want to here. Yes. I mean, mess it up, and, right? And, and, and glob it, and then I'm going to show you how to, yeah. So okay. then I have baked my cake, and I always put the bottom on the facing up Got for it. my top layer, okay? okay? Because that allows you to have a perfectly, you don't have that rounded top. Have you ever made yes. your cake and right. you had a yeah. rounded dome? Well, and now nice let's use the, the okay. top part. Okay, so now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm so gonna I'm dump gonna all the rest back quickly. on here. Okay, so you used a third. A third, and now, and now the second two okay. thirds of it. And you just go with like a wiggle fashion back oh, and forth. Me. And you'll wind up pushing it like over this? the edges and doing the same. And it'll totally go all along, the, all down the so sides you, too. Okay. Yeah. Show me. So let me show you. So you go down the sides and then you can wiggle it that way. Okay, so we're gonna show go towards the front. the front. And you just keep wiggling. And the beauty is, is you can turn your pedestal right. to go all around so that you can see what you're doing. Okay. So you'll keep pushing and wiggling and pushing and wiggling. And then you can kind of decorate it with pretty strawberries and mint. I love so things beautiful. that are edible. Because yeah, then you I, don't have to worry can about Can I have that later? That's yeah. beautiful. That's a okay. coconut lime cake. It's going to be delicious. Oh, my God. All right. Okay. Cutting boards. Please tell me about cleaning them. And I have right. the wood. I have the plastic. I have it all. Right. OK. So my favorite, my favorite two are plastic and wood. Okay, and I use you. these for like veggies and all of 
the and fruits and all that kind of stuff. For raw meat, I use plastic. Right. Okay. So because the reason is, is yes, you're going to wash all of these with soap and water. You always wash your cutting boards with soap and water. Just simple dish soap, a good scrub, you're good to go. But my plastic ones, if they have had chicken, you stick them in the dishwasher. Okay. Okay, because they are dishwasher safe. Right. Make sure they are, but most of them are. Do that you, extra if you're buying a decent one. Wash. But the the wood cutting boards, when you want to do something good, uh, like a deep cleaning, maybe once a month, maybe they smell a little bit like onion or right. garlic or whatever. You've been doing a lot. All you have to do is sprinkle some salt, and you use your cut lemons. Okay. And I always, because you know me, because I'm making my cocktails, and I use that oh, or peels. Yes, I do too. I use the ones that I already have done because. Now all I have is lemon zest. Recycle, and then, reuse. Right, and then you just go ahead and scrub and scrub and scrub, and that will refresh your whole cutting board. Okay. Now, when you're talking about stone or glass, don't I don't you. use these because okay. the reason is is because they dull your knives. Oh God. Okay. okay these right. won't dull your knives. That will this dull. Will. So if you have these lying around, just make them into like a trivet you that you can put something hot on right. top and protect your table. Or more wear. decorative for your party right, for right. Your so here you can use either baking soda and water, lemon and salt, those types of things to scrub yes. down these, and then the rest you put in the dishwasher. Okay. But more importantly, I just like to take you home with me. Oh, for more information more about Mandy and how to be savvy in the kitchen, please follow her on social media. Amazing website, sumptuousliving.net. Thank you, Miss Mandy. Thank you. Hey,